Morning, all. All right, so one game tonight in the National Hockey League, and the scheduling's really kind of, really kind of working out for me, uh, at least on the, in this occasion, because we are going to see Tool tonight, my wife and I, uh, in Vancouver. So I will not be able to see all of this game. The review for this game is going to be very late. In fact, I won't title it review. I'll title it recap, uh, because I'm not going to be watching the whole game, right? So it is Montreal. It is Buffalo. Um, and it is very early in the season. So I don't feel as bad about missing, you know, a large portion of this game. So for Montreal, they're 2-1-1 to start the season. Decent start. Josh Anderson, just the one assist so far, but he's had some opportunities here and there. Uh, on the Buffalo side, they are 2-3 and three to start the season. Uh, Tage Thompson off to a slow start. Just the one goal. And Alex Tuck, just the one assist so far too. So they need those players to get going if they're really and truly going to get back to where we kind of expected them to be this year so we'll see if they win that let me know whether or not you think they can win that in the comment section below this is the first of four meetings between these teams uh they'll meet again december the 9th january the 4th and february the 21st so just that one game i'd like to thank the nhl scheduling for making sure that the tool concert only had one hockey game gary did me a solid that being said moving into news of the day <clears throat> Rick Bonus has taken a leave of absence to be with his wife, and understandably so. She, she had a seizure. She is in the hospital undergoing tests. My thoughts with him and his family, and of course with her as well. Uh, and hopefully that gets cleared up and taken care of, and he rejoins the team and all as well. And uh, yeah, so Bonus has always seemed like a really, really nice guy. Uh, whether we, we can agree or disagree on certain coaching styles he's had over the years, doesn't matter. Uh, at this point in time, family is obviously more important, and uh, all the best to him. My thoughts with him right now. All right, uh, into injury news with NHL hockey players. Uh, Burakovsky cannot catch a break, so he was off to a slow start to the season, and now he's on the shelf. Uh, he's out six to eight weeks. Uh, he had surgery for an upper body injury, so I haven't even seen a report on what upper body. So that's usually shoulder, right? Anyways, it's six to eight weeks for Burakovsky, who missed a lot of last season with injury, missed the playoffs with injury as well. So Burakovsky's a very talented offensive forward, could really help Seattle turn around this start if he stayed in the lineup, but now they're going to have to deal with six to eight weeks without him. So uh, Seattle's going to have to figure this out. Uh, it has been a tough start for the Kraken, and the schedule doesn't get any lighter over the next six weeks. Uh, it is. It's very. It's very uh, interesting to see these these lopsided nights. And when you start looking at team schedules, everybody's got a rough schedule for October, November. Uh, so, anyways, uh, we'll see how Seattle navigates things without Burakovsky. Uh, the Oilers be, will be without McDavid for one to two weeks. <clears throat> he also having an upper body injury. Um, although it looked like his hip from from what it, what uh, how he was acting the other night when he he got hurt against Winnipeg. Uh, that being said, that, that probably rules him out for Sunday's game. Uh, this coming Sunday, of course, is the Outdoor Heritage Classic. And I'm sure that somebody at the NHL's head office, seeing the news that McDavid's likely to miss that game, uh, probably had some, some, some colorful words to use for that. Because obviously McDavid's a big part of the centerpiece of that game, right? And him not being there. And then you've got the slow start for the Oilers, combined with what's been an underwhelming start for the Calgary Flames as well. Uh, I think the spectacle is going to sell the game. Everybody's still going to watch it. But it does lose a little something when neither team is playing their best hockey and now the Oilers are going to be without their best player. The one upside of this for the Oilers is uh, with McDavid out with the slow start, Dreisaitl now becomes that, that guy. And when McDavid's been out previously, Dreisaitl's done really, really well. Uh, so we'll see how things turn out for the Oilers. Uh, Carolina, as the injuries have descended upon the Carolina Hurricanes. <clears throat> so let's go through this. Uh, Svechnikov will not play tomorrow. He is seen as a few practices away. Uh, this according to Rod Brennamore. Uh, Ajo's status for tomorrow is to be determined. They haven't uh, ruled him out as of yet, so they're hopeful he'll play. Freddie Anderson's on the ice for practice, but he there is no return date set for him as of yet. Uh, and Brett Pesci, all we know with him is he shouldn't be out long term. They're hoping it's going to be a shorter term injury, which to me means one to three weeks, somewhere in that time range. 
and that reporting coming from Walt Ruff uh, for the Carolina Hurricanes. So it's it's a lot of players. It's important players. The goaltending for Carolina, I don't think, has quite been where you want it to be. But I don't think their defense has either, which is odd because Carolina is known for having one of the best defenses, if not the best defense overall in the NHL, I would say over the last four years. If you look at the most consistently excellent defense, uh, Carolina at least has to be top three. Uh, so hopefully those guys aren't out for very much longer. Uh, so in Toronto, it is it is remarkable how quickly debates change and how quickly storylines change. So Samsonov has had a rough start to the season. I'm not going to pretend he's not. And on both Sportsnet and TSN right now, there are articles about how Wall should get should get the net. He should be the starter. Uh, I think if you're Sheldon Keith, you're going with whoever's going to win you the game. So as long as Wall goes in there, gives them good games, then yeah, he's the guy. Uh, if he has a rough night, you go back to Samsonov. And I, I don't think that it's it's that important for Toronto. I think what's more alarming for Toronto is that this was seen as a year where Boston was going to be weaker, right? You lose Bergeron and Krejci. Uh, Tampa Bay, uh, no Vasilevsky for the first two months, so they're going to be weaker. And yet Toronto hasn't really distinguished themselves from the rest of the division. And Ottawa's looked pretty good at points as well. So uh, at a, in, in a year where Toronto really should be the number one team in the Atlantic, it probably shouldn't be that close when you look at the overall uh, roster they have uh, seeing this goaltending controversy combined with some some underwhelming results for Toronto overall um, it, it is remarkable how quickly a narrative can change when it comes to the Toronto Maple Leafs uh, so we'll see whether how they navigate this and everything but I, I don't think it matters uh, who's named the starter because at this point if you're Keith you go with whoever's going to win you the game uh, so tomorrow, the Ottawa Senators will honor Craig Anderson. Uh, they're going to have a ceremony for him. Uh, and apparently part of this is because <clears throat> the way that he, he exited the team, it didn't sit right. Uh, basically, he had a really good run with the Ottawa Senators. Uh, then we had the pause in March of 2020, and he just never played again. He ended up going to Washington. They didn't extend him a contract offer for an extension. So he just kind of stopped playing for the Sens. Uh, they didn't finish out the season. Obviously, the Senators didn't qualify for the bubble playoffs, so it, it was seen as an underwhelming exit. So tomorrow he gets the proper send-off. Uh, he does retire as an Ottawa Senator, and uh, I think that's great for him. So uh, at any rate, looking forward to that, although tomorrow it's 16 games. I'm not sure if I'm going to see that pregame ceremony because I'm going to be doing a lot of channel surfing tomorrow. A lot. It's going to be a lot. Anyway, that being said, uh, all the best Craig Anderson in retirement. So the Columbus Blue Jackets. <clears throat> I don't know why my voice cracked there. I must be hitting puberty. Anyways, uh, Yarmo Kekalainen apparently is working the phones, according to Aaron Port's line. Uh, they're looking to move a defenseman. So uh, Yurichek is ready. Yurichek has has jumped ahead of both Peak as well as Boquist on the list uh, of defensemen. Uh, I th it feels like Boquist's name has been in trade rumors before. Uh, this doesn't feel new uh, when it comes to Boquist. He's been a healthy scratch. I believe he's a healthy scratch at points last year as well. Boquist has the offensive upside, but uh, the defense can be a bit of a, 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 an adventure. Just think of it as an adventure. Uh, so we'll see if there's if there's any takers. I think Peak will probably attract more interest. I think Peak's got the lower cap hit of the two. Uh, but the, the Columbus Blue Jackets, that's why they lost Foodie. That they get somebody back. They, they bring up your check. They got to make room. And so uh, Foodie ends up being put on waivers, and of course Nashville claimed him, which kind of helps Columbus because they needed to make room on their roster. Uh, but now they they need to move a defenseman. They're carrying eight defensemen, and obviously Boquist and Peak should be in an NHL lineup and a top six somewhere. So we'll see what happens. We'll see who they end up moving and and what the return ends up looking like. Uh, at this point, it looks like they just they need to get rid of the the. Uh, extra defensemen so they may not even be looking for a player back so we'll see what happens let me know your thoughts where do you think Boquist or Peak go and of the two which defenseman would you prefer to have let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through you just happened upon this video thank you guys so much for watching for all your support I will talk to you again soon